I'm Connor Old, and welcome back to another episode of Movie Star Magic. And this week, we're going to be looking at the great Sigourney Weaver, I think one of the most likable actors of all time. However, she still hasn't sort of reached that serious Oscar caliber, really well-respected actor, even though I think she's a very well-liked actor and has had a really terrific and fascinating career. And in this episode, I'm going to break down her career arc as well as define what makes her such a great actress. But if you are new to the series, which you probably are, as this is the only second Second episode. I hope you enjoyed my Oscars predictions and reactions and sort of season that I've been doing now for over five years. We just passed our sixth season, which was a lot of fun. But after that is over, the channel still continues, and I do my sort of film analysis part of these sort of six months. And I'm doing this new series called Movie Star Magic trying to understand what makes movie stars so indelible, what's the sort of features that they bring to a movie, trying to understand their entire career arc, the different chapters and ebbs and flows as they evolve as an actor, while also trying to identify what's that sort of singular thing that they're able to bring even since the beginning and, and uh, sort of their unique ability that they're able to, to bring that sort of magic to be a movie star. So the series is broken down into two parts. The first one where I essentially break down the three chapters of the said actor's career to try to understand their career arc, how it started, to have sort of how it sort of ended or is ending. Most of the time I'm going to be looking at older actors who I haven't necessarily seen all of their movies, do a deep dive, watch six, seven of their movies every single week to try to understand more about what makes them such a great movie star. And then the second half of the video, talk about that sort of defined feature and what makes them so great that movie star magic touch um, at the end that I think radiates through all of their performances but starting off with Sigourney Weaver there isn't a sort of clear three arc chapter however there is I think in a certain way a sort of emphasis on certain types of movies within her, her, her career arc um, that really ultimately show her um, abilities as an actor and I think the first chapter I'm uh, dubbing the sci-fi star I'm um, getting her first real breakout um, in 1979 Alien, the Ridley Scott movie, and then, you know, having a couple of movies, living Year of Living Dangerously, but then coming back, reprising the role of Ellen Ripley in Aliens. So I would sort of dub this sci-fi career uh, the sci-fi sort of chapter because she starts off in 79 and then really into the sort of the mid-80s doing movies like Ghostbusters and of course Aliens again, I think really defined herself as a sci-fi superstar. I mean, I see Ellen Ripley from the Alien movies totally tied to Sigourney Weaver, you know, even though she's super successful and has done plenty of other things, that's a sort of Luke Skywalker-esque, Harry Potter-esque legendary character that no matter what she does, she will be known as Ripley from the Alien movies. And, and many reasons why those movies are, are successful is because of her. Um, particularly, I think, the sort of leap in the beginning, the first Alien movie, it's very much a sort of a horror movie, thriller movie, so she relies on more of her dramatic chops. However, when Aliens comes around in 86, she's a full-blown action star. So I think the defining role of this sort of first chapter of the sci-fi star of Alien, Ghostbusters, and Aliens, I think the defining role here will be Aliens, just because it sort of helped define her as yeah, she was great in Alien, but that was still, I think, seen more as a sort of directorial feat and the special effects feat. But then when Aliens comes out, this really is a total action star, movie star kind of performance. And I think really helped define the female action star or even just the female actor. I mean, many times in the 40s, the female actors were the in the cream of the crop. They were sort of the, oftentimes the lead actors. And then in the 50s and 60s, that sort of went away. And even the, into the 70s in certain respects, we had this sort of complicated, twisted, dark man. Um, but then when we get to the 80s, I think Sigourney sort of really helped establish the sort of prototypical female action star for the next 40 years. Um, even still today, we're getting uh, similar sort of uh, characters to, to Ripley. But that being said, it's so indicative how influential this character is and what Sigourney brings to the character that made it so influential. And I think there's sort of sometimes bad lessons that have been um, brought from this movie. The sort of tough, hard nosed, incredibly competent, but sort of a bottled up female protagonist. Um, sometimes that's done poorly, um, but I think what Sigourney does so well here and, and what the, the poor movies don't sort of imitate well is that 
yes, this is a woman who is totally capable, is totally badass, who is definitely someone that can just get the job done and oftentimes there's bottles up her emotions and her traumas. But what Sigourney's so uh, capable at doing is allowing those emotions really to overflow, that it's not in the dialogue, it's not necessarily in the story, but it's in her performance that we really understand some of their, her emotional vulnerabilities. I mean, particularly when it comes to, I think, a, a female action here, I'm making that distinction because there are certain things that are innate to, to her and her performance and sort of the female perception and, uh, that uh, she really utilizes. I mean, just for the example of aliens, you know, her sort of motherly instincts for, for Newt sometimes become a vulnerability, but also become a strength of her. And she really sort of allows that to, to be uh, showed, while also sort of, particularly in, in a movie like Aliens 3, really uh, reveling in, in that sort of trauma of these really intense experiences, that particularly in Aliens, because of course it's the sequel, but even in the first Alien, as the, the movie ends, seeing you know all of her, her friends die around her, it, it, she is able to sort of have that vulnerability but that being said she's still incredibly capable so that when she's able to do the stunts when she has the flamethrower and does the one-liners you're never sort of questioning oh is this sort of the right person no she does seem capable she does seem sort of strict and, and militaristic particularly in something like aliens because of course she had done it before and I really think solidified her as an action star someone that can do the action but of course is such a great dramatic actor that of course also brings up a lot of the, the emotions, utilizing her vulnerabilities to um, play off that uh, get capability and confidence. So tough, but relatable, uh, credible physical performance in terms of just the stunts, but of course also that's still uh, a great performance to show off that emotional arc of the character. So this early chapter of the sci-fi star, I think helped define her as a movie star. And then the second chapter, she sort of moves into a more significant uh, dramatic period. I think really in the late 80s and then through the 90s, she really leans into the sort of dramatic role kind of a, of, of a prototype. Really between 79 and 86, nobody really knew what to do with Scorny Weaver. We had the year of Living Dangerously and some odd movies, even Ghostbusters though, she's a sort of a, a, a side character. She's not one of the guys. Um, but then by the time the 80s happened, she really is sort of this bona fide movie star. Of course, she gets nominated for Alien in 86. And then in 88 uh, gets nominated for Working Girl and Gorillas in the Mist in the same year. So two performances, uh, both in different movies, but she was both nominated in the same year. And I think that really sort of uh, is the true breakout of her, both Aliens and then the coming back of the two Oscar nominations. And it shows people that, wow, yeah, she's an action star, but she can also do a lot of these dramatic roles. And it was interesting to see post Aliens really you know, she did the action stuff in the Alien franchise, but really she started to move into the dramatic roles, whether it be 1997's The Ice Storm or Copycat or The Death of the Maiden. I mean, we really see her in this sort of traumatic period, I guess you would call it. I would call it the second chapter of the sort of dramatic period, but it could be the sort of dramatic, traumatic period. Um, I would think of it almost like um, Elizabeth Moss in the 2010s, you know, whether it be in something like uh, The Ice Storm where it's sort of a, a, a whittled away sort of disenfranchised mother or a uh, traumatized uh, serial killer expert in something like Copycat. She has this sort of long, great stare that she utilizes and really does pivot towards that, I think, Getting the nomination for Aliens was kind of a, a big deal because that movie was so big, but then when she gets Working Girl and Gorillas in the Mist, when she's really able to sort of dive into these leading roles, like proper leading roles, not love interests in the year of Living Dangerously or side interests in Ghostbusters, when she really sort of dives into them, she really sort of uh, brings in intelligence, but also uh, humor, but also serious dramatic tropes, uh, oftentimes sort of playing these traumatized characters. So I think that the defining role ultimately would be uh, Gorillas in the Mist, just because she's able to play a real life person, Diane Fossey, who, who can be sort of silly, but also very intense and serious and passionate. And I think that sort of passion and that heartbreak, but also intelligence, it's a really sort of complex role, I think, is able to demonstrate the dramatic chops of Sigourney. So I think really within the 90s, and even something even something into the ice storm, she really sort of leans into that, um, that role, more sort of serious, adult-minded dramas, um, rather than the sort of sci-fi movie she got her start with. And then 
the third chapter is her as a comedy star, which we got a little bit of, of, of taste within, you know, Working Girl is a little bit funnier, Dave, but she's not necessarily the funniest parts of those movies. She sometimes also likes to, likes to play it straight. She does have some funny scenes, but most of the time she is straight, however, uh, straight in terms of the, her, her um, role in the movie. That being said, in this sort of third chapter, which I think extends into today, we have, I guess you would call it the, the humorous or part humorous and part sort of self-acknowledging, self-mythologizing sci-fi legend. So you have a movie where she'll do straight up comedy like Galaxy Quest or Baby Mama. And then you have sort of later on movies, which I think are like Cabin in the Woods and Avatar and Paul, which are pretty directly riffing on her as the sort of sci-fi legend. You know, in something like Avatar, she is the sort of wise doctor figure. Um, but it's not a coincidence that, of course, James Cameron reteaming with her has this sort of connection within the sort of past sci-fi lineage. But even in something like Cabin in the Woods, that's a, a direct reference. Even in, in Paul, with a, with a movie that's so sort of indebted to sci-fi movies in general, having Sigourney there as a sort of big bad at the end, that the director there it is not a coincidence. It's a, it's a conscious choice. But I think the defining role here for her as a comedic star is Galaxy Quest because she that's the only person that could ever play that role because of course you have the sort of winky meta commentary of of course the the show the movies based on uh, these actors who are on this Star Trek like show Sigourney Weaver while she was on Star Trek has this like I said great sci-fi lineage of, of Ghostbusters but also the aliens so it makes sense in this sort of meta way of the show but also really sort of demonstrates her comedic chops she's not just the romantic interest in Dave that has maybe one funny scene she is very funny throughout the movie and gets her opportunities to sort of demonstrate that um, so then you know she like I said she'll go into sort of a, a baby mama and, and can do that too but I think Galaxy Quest was the first one where she could do a flat out comedy and be one of the funniest people in the movie and go toe to toe with someone like Tim Allen and, and, and totally rock with it. So Galaxy Quest I think was sort of another um, defining chapter within her sort of career arc and the way we are today. So I think the sort of last chapter will be the sort of comedic uh, star but also sort of the self-referential legacy sci-fi queen we'll call her and that she's able to sort of meta, meta use in this later half and that's why she goes back to of course she's going to be in a bunch of Avatar. She's in Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, she has some. She'll do a Paul. She'll do a Cabin in the Woods. Things like that. This sort of reference back to some of the, the genre stuff she did early on in her career. Now into the second part of, of this video, the defining feature. Uh, this is usually the title of the video, and what I want to dub this is the comedic intellect. That's what I think of when I think of Sigourney Weaver, because regardless of her performances, there's always something that radiates an intelligence, a competency, and a capability within her, her movies, particularly that intelligence, because whether she's doing funny stuff in something like Galaxy Quest, it's still sort of a dry and sarcastic kind of a humor that she brings that intelligence when we're looking at a movie like Working Girl where she's sort of the original girl boss she is someone that immediately you buy into her intelligence as someone that could do this as a young age because she exudes that sort of intelligence and also that confidence so when we see her um, you know being a year younger than uh, the Melanie Griffith character and sort of putting her has all her stuff together and is working in the sort of boys club there isn't a, a surprise of like oh really that person no it's like an immediate yes and understand this makes sense similarly to something like Girls in the Mist with Diane Fossey you understand that this person has an intense amount of curiosity and passion and love for these animals but also an intelligence and a drive that's just innate to, to, to her as, as a movie star which is why in a movie like Alien I'm not surprised that she's the last one surviving because she does seem to have this sort of intelligence this resourcefulness this capability even more so they sort of play into it in something like Aliens where she's literally done this before so she knows that and already has this sort of skill set but you you buy that so I say a comedic intellect because she uses the sort of intellect in um, a lot of her dramatic stuff um, but also in her comedy it is so it's more of a, a sophisticated high uh, um, sort of intellect less on physical humor and gags and that sort of thing and more on the sort of dry the dryness the sarcasticness these sort of quick uh, witty dialogue that's why I think of her and even more so as we sort of transition into this avatar like period her being the sort of wise doctor makes sense and fits I think really well within that, that franchise
And ultimately, I think that's why we want to watch more of her because she feels someone that is so smart and interesting. We want to know more about her and sometimes it's used in, in sort of a, uh, harnessing trauma in the sense of a copycat or sometimes it's funny in the case of Galaxy Quest, but she can do it all. She can do action. She can do drama. She can do comedy. It's a, a fascinating career and I think it's sort of underrated in the fact that she was able to have such a defining Luke Skywalker-esque, Harry Potter-esque character with Ripley that could have sort of been her only career move and then she sort of evolved from that shows off comedic chops and her dramatic chops as well and really evolves as an actor so I, while I don't think she's seen as this capital G great actor because maybe she hasn't had the Oscar or had the sort of defining um, uh, ultimate role I think ultimately that would be sort of something like Gorillas in the Mist it's also sort of ignoring that idea which I don't believe in that she's sort of this um She's not as appreciated, I think, as sort of ignoring the fact that she has, you know, a movie like Galaxy Quest or Aliens or these movies that are really well beloved. And she has great performances in these movies that even though they're genre, they still are anchored by a great performance, in this case by Sigourney Weaver. But those are my thoughts on Sigourney Weaver, the comedic intellect. Please let me know in the comments down below your favorite Sigourney Weaver performance or movies. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on just her career arc, how it sort of evolved, all that kind of stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video and the new series, but that's about it. Until next time, stay tuned.